Well, one of the objectives in geology is to figure out what types of rocks are at the surface, but also kind of interpolate what's uh, under the surface as well and what direction things go and trying to be able to get an idea of what's down there. Uh, I'm in this little creek bed here and I have all these sedimentary rock layers kind of around me, a lot of these mudstones and shales. And what I want to do is I, I know that they outcrop at the surface, but I want to get an idea of what angle they go down under the surface. And then we can get uh, an idea of maybe what a cross section in this area might look like. And so what we're looking for is we're not just looking at what angle they're dipping, uh, but we're looking also what direction that they're dipping. And so the term for this is strike and dip. And the strike is kind of the direction that they're dipping. And then the dip, of course, is the angle. And so I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to do this kind of uh, old school, and then I'm going to see if the uh, new technology might prevail. Well, so the old school technology I'm going to start with is what's called a Brunton compass. And this is what uh, one of the first things they made us purchase whenever we were in the geology program at university. Uh, and uh, not a cheap little device, but I'm going to kind of show you how this works. So when you open up the Brunton, you're going to notice a few things. I mean, there's a lot of different gadgets on this thing. Uh, but the main things I want to focus on today uh, are obviously you have your compass. Uh, it should be uh, at least the, the needle is pointing somewhat north. And if I was to kind of orient this, kind of flatten this out, get that thing right on the zero there, and it's even set for declination, um, we should be pretty much aiming north right now. Uh, but there's a few other things. And you're going to notice down inside there, there's a, a little carpenter's level. And I'll show you how that works. And then there's also a bullseye level kind of down in that, um, in the bottom part there. And so I'm going to show you how both of these can be used to calculate or I guess just measure the strike and dip of some beds. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to find a nice spot where, you know, nice flat rock. Uh, and so you can see how all these beds are kind of dipping in the same direction. So I really just need to find one good spot and I should be able to get a good strike and dip measurement. I found one spot right there. That rock is kind of right near the water there. And I think I can brush that off and get a nice flat surface. So I'll show you what I have here. So the strike would be the first thing I'll measure. And the strike is essentially a straight line on this rock where if you were walking across this rock, you're not going uphill or downhill. It's kind of like a contour line in a way, but it's just a small, small little straight line. You'll see them on geologic maps. And so you kind of have to uh, work with your compass a little bit here. It's kind of hard to tell with the camera, but if I was this angle, I'm angled too far down, I'm sloping too much. If I turn too much this way, I'm sloping now the other direction. So what I want to do is I want to make my bubble level nice and flat. And you can see I've got the bubble in the middle. And I want to get this thing to where it is running along a nice straight line. And so if I do that, as soon as I get it right about there, then I can look at what the needle's telling me. And the needle should be telling me around north 35 degrees east. So that means my strike is north 35 degrees east. And now I can draw a little mark there and I can put that on a map as well. So I drew my strike line. It's just a little line that if it was just a little ant, you'd be just kind of going nice and flat, wouldn't be going uphill or downhill. Uh, now the dip is always going to be perpendicular. If you can imagine that, you know, you're drawing one line that runs along, say, a contour, well, exactly perpendicular to that's going to be the direction that things are going to be dipping. So now I'm going to be using my little carpenter's bubble, and I'll kind of show you how this works. Uh, there's a little um, lever in the back there that I can use, and I can adjust that little bubble level. And as I adjust it, I just keep adjusting until that little bubble makes it into uh, in between the two lines. So now I just want to do this while I'm actually on the rock here. So I'm set up now on the rock. And if I adjust that back and forth, I can see that, that bubble kind of creeps back and forth there. I'm going to get it to where that bubble's right smack in the middle. I'm resting the Brunton compass right along the flat part of the rock. And once I get it right in the middle, then I know that I'm measuring the angle. So I'm going to stop there, and the nice thing is I don't have to necessarily look at it while it's on the rock. I can pick it back up again. So now if I look, I can see that my angle down inside there. So I pick my compass back up, and I kind of zoomed in, 
and now you can see that that middle line on that rotating part is right at about 14 degrees so that's my dip now if this were a map then i would draw a little small mark the dip mark is usually maybe like half the length of the strike mark uh, and so perpendicular so there's my dip and what i can do is i can actually put a little number 14 degrees and so that is a striking dip of 14 degrees so i wanted to try the new technology uh, my iphone has a compass on it i think they all do uh, and i never realized if they were accurate i never really checked and they seem to do pretty well the uh, one difference is that the reading is azimuth on the compass on the iphone and i can't figure out how to switch it to quadrant i'm not even sure if it can but it's easy to convert so if I take this and I line it up um, with my strike line, uh, I end up with 33 degrees, uh, and you can see it even says uh, northeast. And I think we were at, what, north 35 degrees east on our compass. Um, this gives me a digital readout, whereas the compass, I had to read the little uh, needle. So that's pretty good. And then uh, if I take my compass and swipe, I now have a level. So my level now, I can use it to determine the dip. So if I lay that on there, so if I use the level, I can see that uh, I set my phone on there, and sure enough, it's 14 degrees, which is exactly what my Brunton recorded. So what I have learned is that uh, if I'd have had an iPhone in college, I wouldn't have had to buy that compass for $300. Uh, it would have been nice to actually uh, won't spend that money and maybe eat something other than top ramen. But, you know, hey, it is what it is.